Hey YouTube, it's the Test Lead, and today we're starting a new series called Office Hours with the Test Lead. Here I'll go over any questions you have in the QA and automation space. So if you have any questions, either leave them below in the comment section or email them to me. And I'll try to answer as many as possible. I'm gonna start doing this once a month, but if I get a lot of questions, I'll do more frequently. So this first episode is gonna be debunking some QA myths. I'm gonna go over some questions that I get asked very frequently from you guys. Question one that I get asked a lot, do you need a four year degree from a university to enter the QA and tech space? Honestly, if you asked me this question five, 10 years ago, I would say it's definitely a requirement. But today, I don't think so as much. Degrees can definitely help you land your first job in this space, but should not be a roadblock or a stopper from you trying to enter the space. There are numerous ways for you to learn and require information to join the space with resources such as boot camps and coursework. Sometimes these boot camps and coursework are even more relevant and better for you because they're updated and they're teaching you specifically what you need to learn for a job. Sometimes in universities, you're required to take a lot of general education classes that you're not actually gonna use in the workforce. And it's cool to have in life, but if your main goal is to get a job in this space, maybe better for the boot camp or coursework. And before you think I'm just bashing the education system and universities, I myself have a computer science degree from a four year university. I'm also finishing up my graduate degree, again, computer science and AI. So I'm not anti-school, but it's just good in certain situations. And I'll get deeper into that and the reasons why I'm back in school in a later video. Realistically, some companies still won't give you an interview without a university on your resume but still apply. Don't be discouraged. Number two, QA and testing is a dying job field and will be obsolete very soon. Should I still get into the field? Honestly, I hear this every couple of years. Five years ago, 10 years ago, they said, oh, it's a dying field. Automation is gonna take over. Or even for automation engineers, they said, oh, it's a dying field. AI is gonna take over. And now with the new OpenC and OpenAPI tool, you can write code using this AI tool. Some developers even are starting to get scared about their jobs. Don't worry. As I said, this happens every couple of years. Once you've been in the field long enough, you ignore all the extra noise. In my opinion, QA testing and automation will be here for the next 10, 15, at least 20 plus years. So at least for my career and your career, you should be okay. And I say this not to mislead you, but there are certain things that a human being can still do that AI isn't smart enough to do yet. Once again, AI is a tool. Someone has to use that tool. You have to train up that tool. And the other part is some of these new tools aren't always 100% correct. So if a company tries to rely on them too soon, that could lead to the company's downfall. Eventually, maybe 20, 25 years from now, 30 years, yeah, AI probably will take everybody's job. It won't just be QA and testing, it'll be every job market out there. And that's another topic for another day. Cause think of it this way, if that's the case, there should be no more manual jobs because automation exists. And I was scared for many manual testers at one point. There are certain things that a human being, a manual person can do during testing that a tool can't, plain and simple. So if you're scared, don't be. Just jump into the field. Like I said, I think you have a good 15 to 20 year window right now still. And if it happens sooner than that, it'll happen for everyone's job across the field for every different sector, not just QA and testing. In addition, it's becoming easier to get a QA job because of remote work. So now you're not limited to the certain jobs in your city. You can work in other cities virtually. So it's even more of an incentive to jump into the field. Other fields don't give you that luxury. Number three, testing is very easy. When we think of something that is easy, we overlook the little things. That is the opposite of what you do as a tester. <laughs> as a tester, you must pay attention to every single little detail. Because if you don't find it, the end user will find it in production, costing your company a lot of money. And this becomes harder when you have a tedious task. Let's say you have a manual test case where it has 20 steps and you have to do each individual step numerous times. 
if you aren't focused and become lazy, you may overlook something that should be a bug. So that's why as a tester, it's not really that easy. So let's say, for example, you have a banking application and something that you think is just a small problem that gets released into production may have a big snowballing effect. Now, some question company, a lot of money to fix it, to redevelop it and redeploy it to the end user. The end user experience is terrible now. And the worst part, you lose customer loyalty. Companies spend years and billions of dollars building up their customer loyalty, and they could lose it in a couple of hours. So that's why it's very risky and why testing and QA is very important. Number four, this is actually a very funny one that even in my space and in my work experiences, I hear a lot. QA and testers are enemies to developers. It shouldn't be true. We all should have the same common goal to release a high quality product to any users that meet their specifications. Part of this process is the developers develop the application and the testers test it. So we each have our individual task and we should do it to our best ability. Part of being a tester is to try to find bugs. So it's not you picking a fight with a developer, it's you helping them improve the application. So as a team, we all look better. Testers and developers actually be close together, basically best friends. You should be able to communicate freely with the development team and vice versa. If you have any questions, you should be able to ask them right away. Once again, it is better for you to find a problem where we can isolate it and debug it right then and there, than there to be friction between the two teams, then a problem gets overlooked and gets released into production. And then we go back to our previous question where now the company is destroyed because they lost the customer trust. And believe me, developers would rather you tell them in your team that, hey, I found this bug, instead of this being released to production, and now they're trending on Twitter or other social media apps because this app is buggy that they developed. So they will thank you for actually doing your job. It may not come out that straightforward, but, but you are appreciated. So to recap, you should have a good relationship between the developers and testing team. And last but not least, the job of a tester or QA is to prevent all bugs. This is realistically impossible unless you have unlimited time to test or a very simple small application. The job of a tester is to limit the bugs that get released to production. The more complex the application is, the harder it is to catch all the bugs. As testers, you try your best to limit it, but real life end users are unpredictable. Certain things that you find as normal, you test for, but then edge cases or unpredicted events occur because end users just have a lot of spare time, so they do random things. And this is bound to happen more and more the more advanced your application is, as I said previously. So now you're thinking, why not just apply a limited time and resources to testing? That's not feasible. If you spend hours trying to test this one edge case that 0.001% of a user might do, that's not using resources properly. That time can be better spent testing more predictable paths or another application. So remember, if you have any questions that you want me to cover, whether it's QA, automation, anything about my journey, feel free to ask, leave it in the comment section or shoot me an email. If you need help in your QA journey, check out my book, QA Must Know Vocabulary, available on Amazon. And most importantly, don't forget, learn something new today.